so we continue our series. Last week, we started a series. We continued on Tuesday. And so we do the part three of the gospel starts with G O Go. The gospel starts with G O Go. Part three. Let us pray. Father, speak to us like always. And may we never be the same. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hurrah. So in First Corinthians chapter 15, from the verse number 1, First Corinthians chapter 15, from the verse number 1. Moreover, brethren, Paul is writing, Paul is speaking over here. I declared to you the gospel which I preached to you, which also you receive, in which you stand. He went on and said that, by which also you are saved, if you hold fast the word which I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. The verse 3 says that, for I delivered to you, first of all, that which I received, that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and that he was raised, he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. Beloved, there's so much that we can glean from these four verses. From the verse number one to the verse number four, we see that Paul received something. And Paul was a good steward. When we receive the gospel, being good stewards of it is not just keeping it well in our hearts. But being good stewards of the gospel is making sure that it reaches another person every day. Paul said that, watch here. And number, we have been talking about the gospel start we go. And last week we learned that the, without, without preaching, sharing, or declaring, or proclaiming the gospel, the gospel is useless. It cannot save. It has power to save. But until it is preached, it cannot save. And if it cannot save, then it means that it is actually the death of Jesus that will render ineffective if we do not preach the gospel. So over here, look at Paul. Paul said, moreover, I declare. Look at the words that denote preaching or sharing or proclaiming or telling another. Here we see declare. I declare to you the gospel. We see the gospel to declare it to another. Which I preach. Another word preach to you. Which also you receive. So the gospel is received. We learned last week that we don't seek, people don't seek for the gospel. People don't find the gospel. They receive the gospel because messengers bring the gospel to them. And so Paul said, I declared, I preach, and you only received. And for all of us over here, we all are witnesses that once in our lifetime, we received the gospel, and we never went looking for it. It came to us, and we received it. Hallelujah. In the next verse, you see other words that, that say the same thing. By which also you are saved. So we see the gospel can save and will save. But before they were saved, there was a preaching and there was a declaration. Hallelujah. Which I preach to you, the third verse. The third verse also says that. For I delivered. I bet you we are delivering men. We are, we are Okada riders, like Okada riders, like delivery people, that God has given something to us to be delivered to the world, to sinners and to people that haven't heard the gospel. If you have received it, have you delivered it or you are like an Okada rider or a delivery guy or an errand guy that has somebody's gift or parcel and you have been roaming about the whole year, the whole time, all your life, the whole year, and you haven't delivered it to one. Hallelujah. You see that. Which also, that which also I received. So Paul received it. 
Paul received to deliver. Say we received to deliver. Yes, you don't, you don't keep it with you. You receive to deliver. And the message is part clearly. What is the message? Christ died and paid the penalty for our sins. The scripture says that. It has happened. It is news. And we ought to deliver it. Beloved, in this text, you see the word gospel and preach. These two words, we want to look at the Greek. And you see some striking similarities about the gospel and preaching or declaring or proclaiming. The Greek word for the word gospel in the verse 1 is eugelion. Say eugelion. Eugelion. Drisla. Say eugelion. Are you Drisla? I said Drisla. Say eugelion. Eugelion means good news. So Paul is saying, I have declared unto you the good news, the eugelion that I received. And he said, which also I preach. The preach is eugelizo. Eugelizo. So we see eugelion and the preach or the declaration, the announcing is the same word, but you just, and let me spell the eugelion because write some something in your in your in your book is E U A G G E. How did you spell it? Cancel it. E U A G G E L I O N. Who got it right? You are close. I know you will be close. <laughs> that is the, the Greek word for gospel. It simply means good news. Or the too good to be true news. And to preach me is the same word. But when we get to the L I instead of O N is Z O. So Eugelizo means the announcer or the announcing of good news. It is so closely associated. And then the evangelist, the one announcing, is called Eugelistis. Eugelistis. Eugelist, the same. Eugeli and then S T E S. So it's E U A J J E L I S T E S. It means a person who declares the good news. In in Acts chapter twenty one, the verse number eight, you see an evangelist over there. The word translated evangelist over here. On the next day. We who were Paul's companions departed and came to Caesarea and entered the house of Philip the Evangelist. This Philip the Eugelistus. So you see that all of them start with the good news and they are all intertwined. So Eugelion is the good news. Eugelizio is the act of preaching or declaring the good news. And you jealous this is the one announcing. All of them are the same word because they are bringing the good news of the grace of God and what he has done for us. So in the New Testament, to evangelize or to share the gospel is to bring the good news of Christ. Hallelujah. Beloved, the gospel is news. It is like news. And news is useless until it gets to where it is intended for it to get to. And it contains certain truths that become effective only when we preach it. Beloved, let us understand this. It becomes effective only when it is preached. And it can save a sinner. But until we preach it, it cannot save. Beloved, Paul is saying that when I received it, I also delivered it. Beloved, when we don't preach it, it is not effective. We learned from last week's sermon in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, the verse number 14. Now, thanks be to God who always leads us to triumph in Christ and through him diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. Beloved, the fragrance, this is good news. It smells good. 
the aroma, the savor of the gospel. The good news must be announced and it must spread like smoke. It must spread like, like, like a perfume and it cannot do that until we put some pressure on ourselves and we step out and go. Beloved, a perfume in a bottle is useless. A perfume in a bottle is of no use until you do what? You spray it. That is how the gospel is. And beloved, the gruesome death of our Lord Jesus on the cross is meaningless. It is not just the gospel that has become sterile. It's not that the gospel that has become inoperational or ineffective. What we are actually doing without going is that we are making the death rather because it is the death that produces the news. The news is about the death. So that if you are not preaching and it has made the gospel that can convert or transform a drunkard into a preacher, this gospel that can transform a murderer like Paul into an author of 13 books in the Bible. If Jesus didn't meet him on the, on the road of Damascus, he was going here somewhere and Jesus met him. Jesus had to preach the gospel himself to Paul. Hallelujah. But you see, the gospel contains message about the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Christ. So if we don't go, if we don't unlock it, what is becoming ineffective, what is becoming useless? It is the death of Jesus that is becoming useless. Hallelujah. So in Colossians, I think chapter 1, the verse number 24, Paul, let me see what is in Colossians chapter 1, verse 24. Okay, good, good. Paul is right, he said, I now rejoice in my suffering for you and filled up in my flesh what is still lacking in the affliction of Christ for the sake of the body, which is the church. Paul is saying that it is a finished work. There is nothing lacking in it. But Paul is referring to the necessity that is placed on him that his work is finished and he can save anybody at all. But why is he seem to be suggesting here that something is still lacking about it. What is lacking about it is the unfinished work of the church, which is to preach the finished work to the world. And until we preach the finished work, the finished work is not finished because he finished it so that it will be finalized in the heart of sinners. And we cannot sit on it. And he made a password so simple. G O Go. And all the children here, and everybody can spell Go, and everybody can pronounce it. And that is what we have to do. Over here, we see in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, the verse number 14, that it must go everywhere. Say everywhere. He diffuses it everywhere. In Habakkuk chapter 2, verse, verse 14. A prophecy had been said ahead that the knowledge of the glory of the Lord shall fill the whole earth like the, like the, the, the waters or the sea covers the earth. That is the will of God. And it's because he will have many sons and daughters and he has put trust in us and he has said that for the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea, beloved, and he is waiting on us to go, how would the knowledge, how would this fragrance, this knowledge saves sinners. This knowledge delivers them from all the curses of the law and the curses in their family. But it is in our mouth. And once it is in our mouth, once it is in our mind, once it is in our Bible, once it is in our notebook or it is on YouTube, it cannot save at all. Beloved, listen, listen. Write this thing down. Charles Spurgeon said it many years ago. One of the first quotes of Charles Spurgeon that I, I saw, that I liked. What did he say? He said that the devil doesn't care what you know or believe as long as you are silent about it. And I believe this statement 
For us as believers who are Christians, it should be the bedrock of everything that we do. Beloved, the faith we have come to is called Jesus is the high priest of our profession, our confession. Hallelujah. And in this faith, everything is about word. Jesus himself who saved us is called the word and the word is not silent. He is always talking. The word is noise. It is always releasing words. God created the, the world with words. And as believers, as long as we know the whole Bible and your mouth is shut and you are not saying what you know, even what you know, for you yourself, for what you know and believe to, to become flesh in your life, for men to see, you have to say it. And, 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 and the righteousness of faith, indeed, according to Romans chapter 10, the verse number 6 to 8, the righteousness of faith, what? Speaketh. We speak. And we are always speaking. No wonder he that is living in us, Jesus, is what? The word of God. What is word? The word is a sound. And the gospel must fill the whole world. The righteousness of faith speaketh. Verse 8, 7 or 8. We speak. Beloved, until we are speaking, we are making his death useless. Hallelujah. Are you understanding what we are saying? That's why it starts with gospel. Good news. Good spell. It's a spell. They have cut a spell on him. It means that somebody has stood somewhere and said something. A spell. And it is a good spell. And the L is about God. And you must preach it. That is what Jesus said in Mark chapter 16, verse 15. And he said to them, go. He said we should go into all the world and preach all the gospel to all creatures. That's why in, 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 in 2 Corinthians, Paul said, in every place, 2 Corinthians 2 verse 14, every place, every, and if you have to cover every place, it can be the work of a few people. It should tell our beloved, look, look, look here. If you look at the instruction of evangelism, it should give us an idea of the work and how many people are lost. If only a few people are lost, he will send a few of us. But so many people are lost. And so, we all have to get involved. Tell your neighbor, you have to get involved. Get involved. Get involved. Because it is someone's involvement that got you saved. And we shall tell you and we shall preach this unto you until you become uncomfortable with not winning souls. We must take the initiative. We must go to them. We must go and explain the gospel to them by all means. The gospel or preaching in this text, the preach, you see, every place, every, say every place. Your workplace, in the Uber, in the car, you want to go to the uh, KVIP, public, are they still around? Everywhere. Piper, no. And him, baby, Every place. Every place. Hallelujah. Mark chapter 16, the preach word used over there. From the, from the original Greek, this eugelizo that we just learned, it, it's the announcing of the gospel, the announcing of the gospel or the declaration of the gospel can be compared, when you study that word, it can be compared to, you know, in our village, those of you who have been staying, how many of you have not stayed in a village before? Oh, raise your hand, high Accra boys, Accra city boys and girls. Oh, raise your hand. Raise your hand. You haven't stayed in a village before. Juju, which village did you stay? You haven't stayed in a village before. I don't understand. Untine Krasida. Tiseme. Ya uwa kolebu. Na ya uwa hospital wa kra. Hallelujah. 
Wabo, we are born Pesia. Yeah, since you want to do cool. There's a knife. You clear it like this. You know, when you live in the villages, when you live in a village, you know something. One of the most popular people in the villages are town criers. Town criers. They are called gongong beaters. You understand? They beat the gongong. They carry a message. They herald it. They announce, they proclaim it and make it hearable. So the chief, they want, they are come to do communal labor. A ye biaba. Bibiaba ye be shower town hall and a community center. Bibiaba, asemamba, on hene shishomu. The on hene has a news. It's in the palace. How would they know? And then memo be and quail foam. Say, 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 say. Those things, those things, they can be annoying sometimes. Eh? We, are, we see them in move. We haven't been there. I haven't been there. They can be, they'll, they'll beat it and they want your attention. So they'll make some noise ahead of time. They'll do that. They'll do what? On my birthday, they will roll. Yeah, the village girl is at the, at the right. They'll, they'll, they want to say something, no, but your attention is needed. And so they'll start with some king, king, king. King, 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 king. When they do that, you realize that everybody anywhere will begin to do what? I taught you this. No, 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 no. Careful. Who do what? Who do what? Thank you. No matter what you are doing, even if you don't do this, you will still be cooking, but you realize that you are ready. To hear something. And the word has been ready. Jesus told us that the fields are white. The fields are white. And they are ready. They have pricked their ears. But the gong gong beaters are looking for money. The gong gong beaters have 16 and a half excuses. They are afraid. And they say they are shy. And they say they don't know what to say. So they should go to hell. And they should burn in hell. They have booked their ticket. They are in heaven. And they are happy. We can't be that. Who are you for the on hand to say that for catch me man for the say Tuesday, memo be and go a foam. And you sit there and say, yeah. Ebi Sida. A B C that right? The king has spoken. The people must hear. And the gong gong beater cannot be found sleeping. We can't be found sleeping. We must cry out. And it must be effective. So in Romans chapter 1 verse 16, the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. But the password to the saving power of the message is go. Write it down. The password to the saving power the gospel is Jin Ogo. Until we go, we are making it like what Matthew wrote about in Mark chapter 5, the verse number 13. Beloved, if we are not carrying the gospel and sharing it all around and making his death known, we what we make the gospel, we also become. Beloved, listen, no matter how comfortable or uncomfortable you are, as a Christian, you are not living your best life until evangelism is integrated into your life. Write it down. You, you don't know, you are not living your best life. Your best life is ahead of you until you integrate evangelism into your life. You have no idea how much God can use. You see, there are problems that sometimes we face and we think that they will kill us. We cannot surmount them uh, because we think that we are. We believe, and listen, listen. For me, when I became born again afresh, the way we started this journey was radical. We started in and with evangelism. We went for size, student in church evangelism all over the place. And as, as, as early as six months old or even lower, or earlier in the Lord, I knew that I carried something because before I became a pastor, 
before I became a pastor, even before I became a church worker, God used me to heal people that were almost blind. A woman whose one eye cannot see and the other, could, she could just see men as trees. I stepped out there. Instead of coming to Accra for vacation, went to Nyamibetre, a village somewhere in the western region with, with less than 200 people, lived there with them, with a group of students for one week. And the miracles that happened, beloved, listen, sometimes you don't know what to carry. You feel you are weak because you haven't gone out of evangelism. When you go out for evangelism, that is where we see real power. You see what God can use you for. You see what lives in you. You see what you carry. You see the deliverance of the Lord. You see God operating through in a certain dimension. You come back and your problems look so small for you. You understand what I'm talking about? Sometimes we don't know who we are until we step out. I was amazed. I, I stood there one day as a young, I didn't even know what I said, but I was preaching to a man, a grown up man who can be my father. And the man broke down in tears. I didn't know what I have said. And I was shocked. The Holy Ghost was work. It looked like Namia Sapa Pandem Nisena Namia Penache. Because as soon as I started, I said one, two, three, the man is when the one for all soon. And I felt so humble and anointed. Eh? I, felt, I felt so. Listen, the man was crying. He was weeping. I, I didn't even know how the gospel has broken such a. The man was taller than me, huge. He was in his 50s. And at the time, I probably just turned 20. And the man is just crying. And I said, What? This God is that powerful. And God can use me to make such a man cry. And after that, he, he, he received the gospel. He became born again. One day we will meet in heaven, many, many years ago, in a certain village. From then, I just knew that me too, God can use me. I'm important and I'm in the plan of God. Beloved, you are in God's plan, God's puzzle. Your, in, your inactivity in the field of souls removes or takes something from God's mighty plan for this earth. Tell your neighbor, get involved. Listen, you are the salt of the earth and if it loses its flavor, the gospel is the salt of the earth and we are the salt. Well, you see, the gospel is what made us the, God, the salt of the earth. The gospel is that fragrance. The gospel is the gospel that saved us and made us. And all that we are, we own it to the gospel. Listen. We, when we don't put the gospel, and the gospel becomes ineffective. Listen. The biggest message you are taking from here today is that if you make the death of Jesus of none effect, you are not only making it of none effect in the life of the unsaved, but in your own life, you make it of none effect. You think that you are getting some results, but wait until you get actively involved in evangelism. It can lose its flavor. The gospel can lose its power. And the believer can lose its power. You haven't lost the salvation, but the power that the salvation gave you, you have lost it. And it's useless. It lost its flavor. And when we are not, we have lost our flavor. If you are not lighting the world, and we are not seasoning the world with the fragrance of the gospel, we have lost our flavor. You have to lose your flavor. Or you have to lose it before. Because you, you, are not, you are not preaching because you yourself have lost it. Lost the joy of salvation. Not enthused about church anymore. You have become cold, nominal, flat, lukewarm. And that is why you cannot preach. And so the gospel has become non-effective in your own constituency. Not mine. Not the others. Do you understand? The Bible says it is then good for nothing. It is good for everything. But when it loses its flavor, it is good for nothing. 
What do we do to it? It's thrown down. Thrown? Oh, it's what? Good for nothing. But to be thrown out and traveled upon at the foot of men. May that never be our story. I have said and I've told you that anytime me, for any reason I feel cold and slow, I just, I just don't have to pray the gospel. Evangelism has a way of reviving us. That's why Satan doesn't want you to do it. That's why he has given you enough excuses. Kept you busy not to do it. Because you see, you cannot be actively engaged in evangelism and be prayerless. You can, it is not, you cannot combine lukewarmness and evangelism. No, 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 no. When you go out there, you will see the need, you will see the work, and you will go on your knees, you will pray, and you want to do more, and you run, you, you mobilize for more people to do it. I'm telling you. It is the absence of evangelism in churches that make churches look so cold. And when they get only uh, 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 excited about programs and events and stayed in, inside, no, that's, that's never the will of God. We have to go out. Tell your neighbor, we have to go out. And we have to stay out. We can't trivialize it. We cannot treat it as a man message, a sweet message. The gospel is not something you know and you keep. It's something that you share. And let us look at Jesus' life briefly. How he himself uh, uh, lived this message in his teaching and in his practical life. Matthew chapter 4 verse 23. Jesus went. Jesus went. Jesus did what? What is, what is, what is, what is went? It is what? It is what? No, no, no. It's, it's what? It's what? Yes. Uh -huh. It's the past tense of what? Yes. Jesus went. To where? To where? It's not Galilee. Adam, he went where? Oh, Galilee. Oh. It means Jesus went to every home in Galilee. Oh, every part of Galilee. Teaching in the synagogue, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. He went everywhere. He went. He didn't just tell us to go. He lived it for us to see. And he's gone. And if we carry him, we have to take him. You know, he went. And we are carrying him. And we are his reps. And we also ought to go. In Matthew chapter 9 verse 35. Then Jesus went to all the world. When it comes to evangelism, eh, one of the things you see about evangelism is, is, is community. It's communal. Evangelism is not a department. Evangelism is not a department. It's not a department. When you were sending them in two, 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 some people could have been sick. Some people didn't want to go, but you have to go. So all, oh, all oh, Galilee, now all oh, the cities and world. Oh, we must go to, we must warn every man. We must go to every shop. We must, yeah, there, yeah, Juma, no, no. It must be said that once we are in a community, it must be on record that the church has entered every house. And that's exactly what we are going to do in this neighborhood. And of course, at Awochi, to start with. Every single shop. Don't jump a shop. Don't jump a man. And don't jump a home. Just go there and warn them. Just go there and tell them. If they are Christians, hallelujah, take. If they are not, you go to the next one. If they believe, praise the Lord. If they don't believe, hallelujah. Every. So when you are moving, every. If they give you attention, but if they don't give you attention, next, another person will get the attention. Another day. Hallelujah. Teaching the synagogue and preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. You see, when Jesus came, some people make a, some people make some, some the world and some people make useless argument about the fact that Jesus did not start a church. And of course, he didn't start a church. He just, he, he told us to start a church. 
He said, I'll build my church. He said, you know, I didn't say, I say, oh, but my car, I didn't say, I didn't But he himself just was all over the place. You see, he went to the synagogue. He said, inside the church, like he's anti church. That he was a Jesus, not a Christian. All of this, just make that thing, don't make that thing so controversial. And make that thing that Jesus is not a Christian. God is not a Christian. All this, and he said, you understand? He said, you understand? church, but are outside. Don't make it look like church is wrong. Now listen, Jesus did not start a church to congregate people at one place, but you see, the church is there to make evangelism effective. The church is there to train people to do evangelism. If it is not for the church, we will know what we have to do. So don't say that, okay, so then, okay, every Sunday morning, I will just go, 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 go. How will you be refilled? How will you know you have to go? How do you, will you even know that on the field you are doing it right? So the church is there to help us. The church makes evangelism more effective. But that is not the first and the last. That is not the beginning and the end. It is the beginning, but the end is outside. Just like everything we, we preach in church also, after the evangelism, you come and you hear it over here. We preach, we teach you. Why oh, you come and teach you about love? Come and teach you about humility, righteousness, uh, and all the things we teach you. Where is the demonstration field? Where? It's not here. Or we start, of course, okay, we start here. Everything starts in the household of the Lord. Just to make sure that people here, nobody here is not born again. If you're here and you're not born again, raise your hand, let's get you sharp. You understand? But for all that we come to church to do, even beyond evangelism, is for us to go outside and do it. You go to your bedroom and do, you go to your family, you go to your office, you come and preach. You cannot come in here and we preach to you the gospel, love, and you go and you treat your, your husband anyhow. You understand? You come and we it is it is it's evangelism, sir. But you see, when you are somebody who don't do evangelism, evangelism cry you a warning, cry cry a cow call uqua bonti on ye. Now hear or tiffy. Now boss. Or no or no a Christian leader that only face so. Unque juman tem unya example bea unya a why you not the best worker. Uye Christian unim gospel. Gospel be a nim the unim nechi. No bayana why you was sense yana. And to best worker no. Un Jim Bosu the whole month, the whole year. With this God. So what, what, what will make you But I always say that for those who haven't heard what you know, one day they can hear and improve by you. You must be living your best life because you are hearing the purest gospel. You must make sure that you are, you are operating maximally. Otherwise, Charlie, at the end of say, this is a bar stop. But this is not your bar stop. I said, this is not your bar stop. Yeah. Your best life is still ahead of you. And we will keep believing in you and preaching this gospel to you until we see its fruit thereof in your lives. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah. Jesus said something about Peter. Sorry. Peter said something about Jesus. In Acts chapter 10, verse 37 to 38. That the word you know, the word you know, do you know some word? Do you know some word? Do you know the good news? What is the good news? Like a chorus church, what is the good news? Yeah, the gospel, our theology is summed up in just four words. Jesus died for our sins. Yeah. Our theology is Christology. Eh? All our theology is Christology. What is the message? Jesus died for my sins. At some point. Even if I thought this is grace, not the spelling. Jesus died for my sins. Or Jesus died for our sins. And that is equal to grace. That is how we live. That is how we got to be saved. And that is how we will make it in this life. The word that you know was proclaimed, which was proclaimed throughout all Judea and began from Galilee. 
after the baptism which John preached. Next verse, Jesus. Peter is talking here. Tell us about that. How God anointed Jesus. Are you anointed? Do you have the Holy Ghost? Do you have power? Act 1.8. But you shall receive power. How do you know that Jesus was anointed and Jesus had power? He went out. He went out. He went out. He went out. Who went about? <laughs> now you've seen him in all Galilee. We've seen him in all villages and all cities. Now he went about. Do you know how to go about? Like a madman. You are looking for something. Indeed, the son of man, the savior of the world, came to seek and to save that which was lost. Hallelujah. He went about doing good. Preaching is doing good. Preaching the good news of the Lord. And we've seen in the previous ones that before he healed the sick, he preached the gospel. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Everywhere. We must preach everywhere. That is why, you know, sometimes people say that, people say that, our church at Awoshi, I have counted more than 20 churches that are in proximity, 100 meters proximity to our church. But that's okay. You know, sometimes people say that there are too many churches. But there are too many in the same in the same hour she closed opposite our church. There are three watches sellers like this. One, it's not like there's a cocoa in between them. All. You want the next time you go there, watch. They're on this side like that. Last time somebody went to buy some. Bethany, Premier Bethany, Africa Bethany, Sporty Bethany, almost as well. Nobody complains. When the church becomes plain, they are complaining. You open more churches. More as software, young woman, as well. The churches that we haven't started, they are more than the church we've started. Our own are still now coming. I'm telling you. You say amen. Say amen. If you are born again, this thing should excite you. You start and shout. You should come and put an offering inside. We say you are going to start and you are, you are, you are smart. You are, it's like you are indifferent. Eh? I'm telling you. Provision shop. Provision shop. Shop right to her. Game with her. Everybody is okay. You know, you are from me In any case, we are not in competition. And as Anka, Duncan Williams, Otabel Muna, they started church. Nanka Yen Munka, Nanka, almost started with Arabia. But there are some people God gave birth to you for me. I'm your pastor. See, all these anointed men in Ghana, and you came to me. There are some who will not go to no matter what Reverend is to an Abba does. And they can't even preach to everybody. With no, no pastor has an infrastructure to build a church to sit uh, your friends and uh, one million people. So set a church Hey! Say hey! You a church Yeah! I'm telling you. You think all the children who are here, there's nobody who is a pastor. What church would they pastor? Nakakrena Musi. What church would they pastor? They are mosques. They are, they are, they are buildings. There are companies, institutions, and stadiums and event centers that in the future will all be converted to churches. And the pastors are here to be born. And some of them are walking about. They are drunkards. But they will become pastors one day. Hey! When, we were, when there was no exchange, like everything was okay, everything has come. We have fitted inside the system. Are we in the system? Are you opening branches? Yeah! Hey. I pray that God will also open another, 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 call, call another man. And he will say, uh, exchanging uh, families, churches. You, 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 The filling stations are opening more filling stations. They are opening branches. Everybody is opening branches. The church, which will stay the way we are. Hey, another businessman, another man, another another scammer. He's coming to tell you. Yes, we like it. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, Jesus, Jesus was a preacher. I'm a preacher. Call me a scammer. They called him all manner of names. Everywhere. What a menuka say, what a copoquasi, Nakovia. Let me, let me just stay. Let me be our pig farm. In Luke chapter 15, in Jesus' teachings, from the verse 1, he's talking about they are criticizing Jesus that he's somebody that works with sinners. Uh, your friend is saying, uh, uh, he works with sinners. They are saying that, hey, he's eating with sinners and all of that. And he said, listen, 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 listen. You don't know my mission statement. You don't know why Mary gave birth to me. You don't know God's plan. Mm -hmm. Me, I came to seek and to save the Lord. They had a problem with Jesus from the verse 1 to the verse 3. And he said, let me teach you something. Me, you say I'm going to sinners. Even if there was only one sinner, I'll go to the sinner. I'm going to, I'm going to the house of sinners and I'm eating with them. Wait. They prepare the food and I'm eating with them. Wait, I can cook for them. This man receives sinners and eats with them. By the verse 4, he said this. And this really exemplifies the gospel. And he said that, what man of you having a hundred sheep if he loses one of them does not leave the 99 in the wilderness and say, go. What is the password? And go what? After. Go after. Go. G-O, go. Say G-O, go. G-O. G-O. The one is always paramount. Go after. Searching. Looking. Go after. Listen. What is it? Everybody watch here. What is it about souls? A DNA, a war, or crown one. And yet, the jam one or crown. Send me what Jim McCrown. We are so winners. There's a reason for that. I want to think about what is it about one soul that Satan and God are all after? What is it about souls that Satan and God are all after? And you are, you are after what? Even if you're on Satan's side, you should be looking for souls. Think about it. Think about it. What is it about a drunkard? What is it about a sinner? The God in Christ. For God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself. And Satan, what is it about souls that when Jesus died and rose that Sunday morning in Matthew chapter 28, from the verse number 15, he gave large sums of money. People to go after one soul. What is it about a soul? I pray that the Lord will open your eyes to see. Because a soul is worth more than everything in the world. For he said, what shall it profit a soul? If he gains the whole world and loses his soul. See, I'm just praying to you estimate a soul the same way he estimates. When you call a carpenter or a painter or a hawa, when you call uh, your friend is saying, when you call a, 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 a plumber, can you give my estimate? My estimate. A human no, who person here no. Problem ne human no be solve of you or no. It is it will it 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 shows in the estimate that they will give you. If you want a kitchen stool, they will give you an estimate. Because all problems are the kitchen stool. So, and if you want to do a wardrobe, wardrobe to their size. A compartment. The 
estimate. Pray that the Lord will. The, the problem is, you think a soul is, is, is like a dog. It's like a, a, a poncha you couldn't wear. And what is that by a soul that even the laws of countries and constitutions say that you cannot sell a soul? Child trafficking is a crime. What is it about a soul? That when you attempt to murder, it's murder. We will jail you. What is it about a soul? What is it about a soul? What is it about a soul? That we can't see and we pass by them. We have left them in homes and we have come. And when we say we should even go out, you, you, are, you, are, you are not excited and you do it anyhow. What is that about a soul? I said, even if you are on Satan's side, souls will be your target. How much more will you be on the side of the king of kings? Think about it. And it is my job to help you through the Bible, Holy Ghost, to understand the estimate of a soul. And like I said, the estimate, what is used to purchase it, will let you know the value of a soul. Of course, a soul is worth the blood of God. Because he was created in the image and likeness of God. Look at it, that he will live 99 to go for one. In the verse 8, it gets diligence is required. Compassion and passion and diligence is required. In the verse 8, or the first one is a man. What man of you? What man of you? I said woman. The verse 8, the verse 8 said, okay, now woman. And what woman? Having 10 silver. Talking about that. He, he used the one. By the time he got to the verse 15, the verse 11 and 15, he's talking about the man whose son God lost. That's what he was going to do. Over here, he said that. Uh, you have ten coins. One is lost. You have nine. And now, 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 say, now, 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 It means that the devourer is around. So, let's dwell here. Let's stay in church. Let's stay in church. Let's stay in church. Let's stay in church. We are happy. Kadosh, Kadosh. We are happy. We are happy. Jesus, let's do all here. Let's do all here. Let's do all here. We have a good pastor. We are in a good church. Air condition is here. My sisters are here. My brothers are here. Let's do all here. Here is fine. Cozy. Stay in our comfort zone. Let me keep the money. Let's do all here. Let's make fun. There's more to life than church. Coming to church. There's more to life than marriage. There's more to life than making money. There's more to life. There's a real hell. There's a real devil. There's a real heaven to lose if you don't preach to sinners. There's a real hell for people to burn for eternity if you keep our mouth shut. Our judgment will even be higher when you hear sermons like this, and you are still disobedient, one tip, one care. Not many people alive have heard evangelism in clarity, in details, like you have heard. You are not doing the work of an evangelist. Maybe check. I always tell you, maybe you are not born again. Come and let's start afresh. You won't keep the nine. It is not enough. More churches. More churches. Yes. Next doctor. Next patient. Next. He said that. Look at what the woman does. The man leaves the 99 and he goes after. But the woman does something. Some details in this verse we must pay attention to. If she loses one, she will, she will light a lamp and go and buy a broom and sweep the house Searching, say searching. Carefully. Carefully. Other verses will give you other ways about the careful. Until. You find until. This is diligence. We go search for them. Listen, when we understand the predicament of the lost, 
when we understand the predicament or the problem of sinners, we will never expect them to come to us. In 2 Corinthians chapter, chapter 4, the verse number 3 to 4, they are blind. You don't expect a blind man to come back home. You don't expect, they cannot find their way home. They cannot hear. They are blind. The God of this world has blinded them. So they can come and we have to go searching for them. If they come, they have come by accident because they are blind. If they come, they came by accident because they are blind. They are blind. You don't expect them to come. Remember what I said? So, unia, 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 nenefra, na ufifia. Obeka se, wenya tete tu, na jimu daho, inti obeba fi. Think about it. You have a brother who was blind, or a sister who was blind, or your mother was blind, and your mother left home. Nakase obeba. You go to do do. You go searching. The Bible said that she lights, she lights a candle, she lights, guys, gets a broom and sweep and search diligently, carefully, until we have to go and go until we win one. Paul will say that I have become all things to all men, that by all means I will save some. This man was a tent maker. There's not, there's not a rubbish theology going out there. So I put it, I'm a doctor. Doctor is my ministry. I'm me, teacher is my ministry. I'm a policewoman. I'm police is my ministry. God has called me as a policeman. Me too, the pastor is doing his ministry. Me too, I'm a pharmacist. It's my ministry is nonsense. Say nonsense. Say nonsense. Say me too, I'm an undertaker. Undertaker is my ministry. In Acts chapter 18, verse 3, look at Paul. Paul was a tent maker, right? But Paul had an attitude towards life and had an attitude towards work and much more towards the gospel that we must learn. He was used for his occupation was a tent maker. You see a tent maker? Amen. This tent maker says something. This doctor, this teacher, this manager, this whatever, this teacher, this soldier, this person who is working said something in First Corinthians chapter 9 verse 16. For if I preach the gospel, I have nothing to boast of. <laughs> For necessity is laid on me and necessity is laid on us. Yes, woe is me. If I do not preach the gospel, woe is me. Woe is me. Woe is me. Or you don't want to say that because you don't preach. Woe is me. Woe is me. Christ has died to save me from all woe. But woe, you see, you don't have to say it. So woe betides you. What, what is Adam that? Woe betides you. Say, Musio and count. And you know me, a musio. Can we say with Paul? The only one, the only Paul Clement. God bless you. It's a necessity is laid on us. Necessity. It's a necessity. Time is short. Men are lost. Men are dying. Men are dying. That's the way the people are dying. And the way people are dying, eh? we shall not be here forever. Let's go and warn all men. Want me if I don't announce the gospel? I don't tell the gospel. No wonder we saw him in the chapter 15 declaring it, proclaiming it. But of course, is it the same? Is it Paul's gospel we have believed that we are so excited and blessed and know that we are new creation and we are, we are, we are the righteous of God? Now what Paul said, this is also in the, in the gospel. And you don't have to say it. You know, there are some things that when, when, when you don't do, when you don't do, you know, you see, if you don't pray the gospel, you are in sin. Sin is disobedience, right? Because he has commanded you. If Jesus said do and you don't do, it's a sin. Yeah. So you have to ask whether you are in obedience or disobedience. Hey, 
na ni ni ve fo na de na wo mu wa the people of Nineveh, if you see the way God loves souls, they will, will love money. They will love money. But the one, the, the one that owes all silver and gold loves souls. If you are smart, you love what he loves. And he said, them, seek you for the kingdom of God. And he said, yeah, I know you love money. Ah, you, everybody likes money, right? Money is good. Listen, if you, if you, haven't, if you haven't seen money before, or you haven't seen somebody who has money, maybe when you say money is good, you don't understand. But money, eh? Derek. Money, eh? Derek. Receive money. Receive money. I will like money. But you must not love money. Sika. <laughs> hey! Another time we talk about money. But God loves us. Nini ve form. Jonah, Obeko. Iya, Obaya, Iya, hey, Bonsuba, Minu, Obe, Fio, Obe, Ko, Obe, Ko. What is it about souls? What is it about souls? Nineveh is ripe. Jonah said he won't go. He went to preach, and all the snakes and mosquitoes and bed bats and all the bats and crocodiles and all the goat fasted. One man, he won't tell us to go when they are not ready. And he said he will be with us. And he will go with us. He won't leave us on the way. We will not disobey him. Necessity is laid on us. There are some things, if you don't do, they come on you. You don't have to ask for it. You don't have to pray for it. I'm not saying you will be tied to you. But Paul says you will be tied to him. We are called to go. And we will go. In John chapter 15, verse 16. Go and investigate sometimes how and why you have too many unanswered prayers. We don't want to get into that. When it is not explained well, it slides into some, some whatever. But I say, you didn't choose me, but I chose you. I chose and appointed you to go and bear fruit, that your fruit remain. That is evangelism and discipleship. What is said after you don't like? That whatever you ask my father in my name, he may give you. Eh? Do you understand? May is not, the Bible is not an English book. Do you understand? You know, you want to stretch the Bible. You know, some, you know, some people don't understand grace. They stretch grace. Otherwise, we should never say, God bless you. I'm already blessed in Christ. If you say, God bless you, you are repeating, I'm already blessed. The Bible is not an English book. Eh? Eh? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ is not what you think. Do you understand? Otherwise, you should never say, I am, you, God bless you. I don't need it. I'm blessed. But he has already blessed with all spiritual blessings. He will teach you well in this church. You understand? But go and bear fruit. For not bearing fruit, this is your repentance season. You have to show God your fruit. We all have to see and inspect fruit. Fruit. Not only of righteousness and good character, but fruit of human beings who are in church. Who are there because you preach to them. Oh, see? But I appointed you to stay. That you should do what? That you should highlight the goal. We are closing. That you should. The password is. You are not appointed to stay. You are appointed to go. And bear fruit. And in this month. Next month. The rest of the life of this church. Like our mandate. Preaching what? To how many men? How many times? To the last man hears. We are going. And we are there. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you so much for coming. I hope you understand. Say, I am a soul winner. I am a soul winner. I am a 
soul winner. All the job winners say, I'm a soul winner. We are soul winners. We are soul winning church. We are sinner seeking church.